Hey everybody, welcome back to the Drunk Turkey Show. I'm Daniel J. Yes, that was a turkey. Yes, he's holding a bottle of grandpa's old cough medicine. And yeah, he was making a chicken noise. What else would he be doing? He's drunk. I'm Daniel J. We got Hyman, we got Big Blue. Today, I'm gonna salute to you guys and take the first shot and we'll go forward from here. Salute. How you guys doing? How you doing, Hyman? What's been you since the last time you've been on? Um, not a what lot. What are you drinking? I'm actually drinking uh, some Coke with uh, Bird Dog. That salty nice. caramel whiskey. Nice. That salty caramel whiskey is pretty good. The first time I tried it was with my boy Daniel T. Go look him up on YouTube, guys. He's under Daniel T. Sings. He's a pretty good singer. He introduced me to the salty caramel with the soda a few about a year back and the unfortunate thing is the sal salty caramel with the uh the crown option is discontinued so hopefully it comes back this um this christmas or whatnot because i think it's a seasonal thing uh just a little fyi to everybody watching um Jaime was the best man in my wedding and me and him and um and daniel t we got pretty toasty the night before <laughs> on some bird dog <laughs> yeah, what about did. you blue how you doing what are you drinking uh today i'm drinking cranberry ginger ale with vodka Oh, nice, nice, sophisticated. I was basically gonna say that too. <laughs> <laughs> I like cranberry Great. ginger, man. It's a nice, smooth drink. It is, it is. Cranberry, um, I, I tend to get the uh, cranberry with vodka quite often and also the screwdriver, the orange juice and vodka. That goes down pretty smooth. I, I really yeah. like that. Me and myself, speaking of orange, enjoying a Bud Light orange. It's pretty good. It's the first time I've ever tried them. Uh, it's going down pretty smooth. In full discretion, guys, this is not my first one. So I will be a little bit, a little bit you know, on the lighter side. But, you know, with along the um, the same kind of concept of what we were doing last week, you know, going in with Bob Lazar, we kind of wanted to stick with the same thing this week. Talk a little bit of alien abduction and nothing better than the, uh, it was the uh, Travis Walton story. Uh, back in 1993, I uh, went to the movies with my parents and was had my mind blown by the movie Fire in the Sky. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I recently rewatched it. It is a it's still as good as it was then. The story is amazing. And from what I hear and understand is they're coming out with a remake. Um, with that being said, did you watch the movie when it first came out, um, Jaime, or was that a movie that you saw more recently? I remember watching that movie with my dad, actually. Uh... That movie actually gave me nightmares. I don't know why. I was like seven, eight years old at that time. And it, 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 it tripped me out, man, the first time I saw it. To this day, I still get goosebumps from just watching it. I agree. What about you, Blue? Um, when was your first uh, introduction to Fire in the Sky? I just recently saw it. So I, I, I didn't see it when we were younger. I don't remember it, at least. Really? Uh, so, so seeing it here recently, what were your thoughts on it? It's actually pretty good for... for uh, for the time it came out in, you know, it's like. Yeah, it's I mean, we're looking at what? Almost 30 years ago? Yeah. Yep, almost. <laughs> yeah, and that's when the movie came out. Now, the incident, the incident happened in 1975. Um, you know, to kind of go into the movie, and, and if anybody else who hasn't seen the movie, we will, this is your spoil alert or so. Um, if you haven't seen it and you want to watch it first, this is your opportunity to press pause and go do that. It starts off with a group of five guys in a truck hauling tail through the woods, right? Now, they end up going to a, um, I guess, a restaurant. It's late at night. Uh, you know, they they seem to be distraught. They talk, you know, they're talking it over and basically saying, we're just going to stick to a story and it, alluding that they're going to call the police. And they call the police, the police arrive. And at this point, they kind of tell them you know, who they are. The specialist detective that shows up is asking him a little bit about Travis Walton and, and their crew and their day. Uh, did it leave you a lot of questions? What did you pick up from that first opening scene of them driving through the woods? Did you know what was going on? What do you What do y'all think? We'll, we'll go with you first, Blue. Well, I thought they were being chased by something when I first saw it. You know what I mean? Because they were hauling ass. They ran somebody off the road. Oh, that's right. When, when they when they, uh, when they got to that, it was like a restaurant bar, mm -hmm. and they got out all calmly. You know, didn't say a word. They just went and sat down. So I was like, okay, then what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? Like. They're running from something and then they're calm. Exactly. Uh, that threw like, me off a little bit. Exactly. Kind of reminded me like when you're at home and it's dark out in the middle of the uh, 
in the middle of the, of the living room and then you take off running to get under your bed and then finally once you're under the covers you're safe right <laughs> that's yeah. kind of what it felt like all right they made it to under the covers they made it to the restaurant with those other people oh yeah that was that was my parents house when i was younger the hallway looked like a mile long when we were younger man so i had to run from the living room all the way to the room in the back with no lights on you know to get those uh, spaghetti legs <laughs> oh yeah, you feel them. You feel it. The back of your hair raises. The, the, the back of your neck, the hair raises. What about yeah. you, Jaime? What did you think about that opening scene? Did it seem like, uh, like it, it got to the point? What, what did you think? I like the fact that uh, that's actually the the ending of the, well, the midpoint of the of the movie instead of the beginning. They wanted mm -hmm. kind of like Tarantino that, which was cool because it it started off. It got you intrigued to, to find out what they were running away from. That's true. And it, it kept you uh, invested in it as soon as you got in it in, into the movie, and I, I find that really interesting. And how they went back to the beginning, of how they start off the day, and then to the point where they get to the diner and start saying the story to the to the police. Exactly. You know, just by looking at the show and up to that point, pretty evident that that well, one, it kind of indicated that Mike was in charge, right? And then it also indicated at that point that there was somebody who was having a confrontation with uh, Travis Walton, which was going to be the guy I referred to as Dallas. Um, did you guys pick that up also? Did y'all think that he was being kind of kind of odd? What were y'all think? What y'all think about Mr. Dallas? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that he was being an ass. You know what I mean? And I you can tell there was tension between each other. They, they didn't like each other, but you know, you have to work with each other. So they still mess with each other. That's true. That's true. What about you, Jaime? Did you think that Dallas was, um, seemed to, it seemed like he didn't like Travis, right? Yeah, they had bad blood between each other. Um, but um, also, if you look at the way he was so adamant about not sticking to the story because he knew that that story was way out there. That's true. He, that story felt, was way out there. He felt like they're not going to believe, believe him. And right, and a lot of I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he had a bad rap. I mean, he had yeah. that criminal record, right? Yeah. And so when yeah. you have a criminal record and somebody goes missing, a person with a criminal record is probably going to get all eyes on him. Oh, yeah, they're going to get all be very suspicious. The movie goes into that day. It starts off with Travis on a motorcycle, um, and the one thing that I noticed is apparently this guy's a player. He's picking up donuts from one lady to hand to another i was like wow that's pretty interesting <laughs> uh, um it's donuts bro like, you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> <laughs> it's hard out there for for but but you know she didn't like him enough because she didn't give him jelly filled you gotta get jelly filled you know you gotta get the, that's the true that's <laughs> the, the cold ones from the day before she <laughs> is at least for sure well maybe they were later and um <laughs> but you know i found that interesting and then and then he goes and he shows up and he's out there with mike and this is kind of where the film kind of alludes that there's some financial problems problems his wife is telling him that the uh the banks are calling about the mortgage and what are they going to do he goes outside and, you know it, it shows that travis is dating apparently mike rogers is a sister and um, she's the one who is the recipient of the donuts and uh, and they go off to go um go do their job it appears that he's they're apparently some type of contractor to go clear out some woods and and cut down some trees out there in turkey springs arizona but apparently De uh, dallas and and uh, travis had some problems and so uh doing y'all's research did y'all find uh, anything else about Dallas or anything? Did y'all look into him by any chance? No, I, I didn't. But... Oops. Let's that. No, well, I know, I know he had a rap sheet, and I know he was uh, pretty much a drifter, just looking for work to get by. Um, yeah. He had a, I know he had. A, I know he was a gambler, a pretty much all around bad boy. It's. For whatever reason and i guess um i guess it alluded in the movie that travis liked to make fun of him a little bit about his inability to read and yeah. i i caught that right off the bat that what they were reading if you notice that the headline on the tabloid magazine of the national Enquirer said that somebody had gotten kidnapped from aliens and that caught my eye and come to find out later on 
that National Enquirer was having a little bit of a, uh, a little, giving away a little bit of money for some evidence on UFOs during the time. Um, you know, I, I thought that was pretty interesting that the, uh, the filmmakers threw that in there. You know, that, hey, there's this speculation on what's going on here. And that even they had some speculation on the Travis Walton story. Yeah. And so apparently they go on out there and they finish the job. They're heading back home. And on the way home, they see a fire or what looks like a fire. They go up to it. And lo and behold, they find a, a flying saucer with some red glow on the bottom of it. What did you all think about that portion of the movie? Did, did it seem real? Did it seem that? Um, do you think that if you were in their situation, would you be trying to find the fire? Would you be going to danger? Or do you think you'd be going away from it? I I know they were talking about, well, Travis Walton in, uh, in one of the interviews he did, he said that sometimes they would find uh, uh, fires that were produced by, by lightning and they would oh, try okay. to take it, take it, turn off, put it out before it, it got bigger and went on. But I think that's that's what that's what made them go towards it and mm -hmm. check it out. And um, I, I I thought the fact that in the movie itself, I thought the fact that they didn't show as much as I thought they were gonna show the UFO and, and left to the audience to like picture it to to right. to use their imagination more. And that was pretty right. cool. Yeah, no, I, I like that too. I like that a lot. I mean, there was only like one still image of it. Wow. While old boy was underneath the uh, underneath of it, what yeah. do y'all think? What do you think, Blue, about about him running out? Do you think that that's something that most people would do? Something that something a sane person would do? Run out to something that's? Un I, don't, I don't think most people would do that. You know, what I mean, if they see something in the sky, I mean, at least I would probably try to stay in the car because never know what's gonna happen. But I mean, sometimes curiosity always gets them. You know, what I mean, it's that saying. Uh, curiosity kills a cat yeah curiosity kills a cat so you know yeah. it, it got him if you were in mike travis's shoes or mike rogers shoes i'm sorry and your buddy runs out and he's in the middle of the field and he gets you know there's a blue light on him and he gets knocked down are you taking off at that point or are you going to go out there and get him uh they're best friends i want to i want to <laughs> stay and try to go get yeah. him i don't know why they, they booked it but i mean I guess friendship went out the window <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. probably like, man, I got kids to support. Let me get yeah, out of here. I mean, <laughs> at least he went back, right? Right. That's a story he that he went bit. and he left. It's just a little yeah, bit that, that's true. That's true. He did go back for him. What about yeah. you, Blue? Do you think that, um, what do you think about them leaving him there? I mean, it, I, I probably would have tried to, you know, to, to, to get my buddy, you know what I mean? Try to help him out. You know, maybe yeah. drive the truck towards the, the thing, you know what I mean? But dude, that would scare him off and try to get him back in, you know? But, That's you know, true. everybody you else was panicking in the back. They wanted him to go and he's like, you know. That's I guess, absolutely true. I guess, uh, I guess we'll never know what we would do in that situation until we're put in it. Shoot, I, I think there would be three of us out there underneath the dang UFO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing rocks like, and shit. Come on, man. We'll teach you how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> was it just Mike that went back for him, or was there another? I know he left some people behind, and then he uh, went back. It was, just, it was just a driver, Mike. Yeah. Right? In yeah, the, everybody else left, got off the truck. In the movie, in the movie, the Mike went back by himself. But I think in the as when when Travis Walton actually told his story, he said that they all went back. They all yeah. went back together. I think they just did that on the movie to make it a little bit more suspenseful, more. You know, they had different. Right. Yeah, that I mean, they want to they want to dramatize it and make yeah, it more yeah. dramatic and, and it's suspenseful just, and whatnot. It's just little details like that that they took out and some details that they actually put in to make it a little bit more uh, more better i guess you could say more keep, and just keep you uh, more in track more intrigued into the to. film yeah yeah exactly so it cuts back to the to the restaurant and and yeah. there right um that's when the police officer you know kind of tells him you know what he's what he thinks and and as they're walking out he's looking at the truck and that's when he finds the national Enquirer 
um, magazine that shows that a Nebraska man had claimed to be abducted by aliens or kidnapped by aliens around the same time. And I think what they were really talking about was the what really was going on at that time was the Betty and Barney Hill story. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. That that actually was happening and was airing around the time that this happened. I think that the film kind of took the real life um, story that was happening at the time, which is the Betty and Barney Hill abduction and replaced it with a Nebraska guy just so that it, for whatever reason, you know how Hollywood is. Yeah. And so for the next five days, Travis Walton is missing. They do a search. They can't find anybody. People are speculating that these guys commit a murder of some kind. In the movie, there's a town hall, town hall meeting where uh, the outcome being is that Mike um, sees the um, town hall happening across the street, walks in, hears what's going on, and then basically agrees to take a polygraph test. And apparently all of them, but one of them passed. Dallas, it came back inconclusive. They end up doing it. He ended, they all end up passing it except for him. And then I think it was like, what, two days later or the next day, uh, on day five, uh, Travis Walton appears back. The fact that they brought him back in some more similar, I found to be astonishing. I mean, if you're an alien species, right? And this is something that is uh, beneath you, right? Then I found it odd that they would drop him back off somewhere close to where they picked him up. You know, what do they care? where they drop him off at. You know what I mean? Drop him off yep. in China yeah. or something. You like it was saying? crazy how how supposedly they dropped him off, but you see the movie when he wakes up and he's crawling around and he opens that one spot. There's a guy like half rotten, you know what I mean? Like still oh, moving yeah. around. Mm -hmm. Like his guts are all spinning out. He's like trying to like move and stuff. So, uh, you know, how'd he get out? Yeah, yeah that, it doesn't show how he gets home. And yeah. So I, that's, that's the scene you're referring to. Yes. Um, he ends up, from what I understand from that point, from what I remember is he ends up finding his way to where the aliens, um, hang out. He found one, their spacesuit, and I guess an alien was inside of it. And he got into a little bit of an altercation and they ended up pulling him in and doing some tests on it. Those tests were, were horrifying. Uh, you know, we're seven years old when it came out. The story says it's based on a true story. So. At seven years old, I'm thinking everything is pinpoint accurate. And so yeah. <laughs> that's a scary I was, I was terrified, yeah, yeah. man. And they're gonna put that 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 needle thing in his eye and like, holy shit. That's pretty crazy. I was like, man, like my eyes I was watching it the other day, my eyes were tearing up during that scene because I was like, No. I got myself some PTSD watching that movie again. But you know uh, what? The, the, you'll be surprised that the human eye can take, man. It's pretty strong. Oh, yeah. I, see, I see needles go into eyes, you know? Well, I don't know any anatomy of the eye. The, 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 the worst thing I've seen with an eye injury was um, a few years back, and actually Hyman was there. We were at a, a softball game where the pitcher took the uh, ball to the eye, and I believe he broke his orbital bone. And there was yeah. blood and, and everything everywhere. And um, not gonna lie, there was some a bit of this involved. And uh, for those that are listening in, that's just uh, that was my beer can. We hadn't seen how bad it was until the ambulance showed up and and everybody kind of got out of the way. And then we're like, oh crap, that dude's eye came out. And so when that stuff happens, Blue, can they put it back in without any damage to the eye? Like it's hard. I mean, they can, but it's hard. There can be some eye damage, you know, some retina damage. That's why they have to go back for testing later to get everything checked. So when you have damage like that, like let's just say it was uh, me, right? Like if my eye were to come out and they pop it back in, um, would I have the like? Well, if I was holding my eye right here, would I be able to see off my hand? Like, how would that work? You're the medical. I mean, I don't know. It, it, everybody works different. It depends on how, like, if the retina gets damaged. But I would think they'd still be able to see some. I mean, but some, yes. you know, when you, when you get hit in the face, your eye goes kind of blank for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, maybe you had that reaction. You know? we're, we're answering all the questions we ever wanted to. to find out. Yeah, I know. Every question we wanted to know. Well, your eye behind you, you see back yeah. there. Yeah. Turning yeah. around. Yeah. I, wish. I don't know, man. I don't know. But. Or that's you become a pirate, either one. But uh, but that's the I've, thing I've, too. I've like, seen like 
splinters and eyes, pieces of metal and eyes, and you know sometimes you know we get we we drill them out at work, so I have to hold the eye open to drill them out. Or sometimes you know, Jesus, the doctor gets a needle and he just digs it out with a needle. There's there's a there's a layer above your cornea that, that that's pretty thick, you know. I don't I don't yeah. think the uh, eye and drill should be in the same sentence. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is that. It's like a dull bit and it's rounded, but yeah, it, it drills to get like the rust and the piece of metal out of people's eyes because a lot of people cut stuff with grinders and they don't wear safety glasses. So I'll tell you that much. These are oh, my safety geez. glasses. <laughs> <Just point your eyes. laughs> That's the best, man. This is the protection. You, your reaction time is faster than the shroud that, that shroud can get into your eye. Just close your eye fast enough. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, that thing was was straight up terrifying. In retrospect, they they damaged him in some way, you know, with the light beam. And I guess they were trying to fix him and then also studying him at the same time. There's no footage or anything of him being dropped off, of him talking about how he got there. He just was there, right? And they find him, they call some UFO investigators to talk to him um he freaks out he freaks out a couple times where does the movie go from here i'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank to be honest it, with you they, it, they they go look for him and at the at the gas stations and it's storming and mm -hmm. the first gas station they pull up to he's not there so the guy's like oh you know what there's another one down the street i know that he's got to be there and the brother's getting all mad saying the lost cause but when they drive to the next one the girlfriend or wife starts like looking and she noticed them like you know hovering I mean, hover, hiding next to a cooter outside the gas station that's right so they, so they pick him up and and, and he gets get, he gets to go back home and, and oh, but that's the part that I, I i thought was crazy was they they get there and somehow the gas station's restroom is open right so he goes into the gas station restroom and he's like how, like sitting on top of the toilet like in a crotch position but then the 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 driver which is travis right travis he he calls some weird some weird guys that were supposedly you know oh that was mike yeah he called mike uh, yeah mike um, yeah he called the the, the ufo the, guys yeah. yeah they were called um i'm not sure who they were called in real life but in the movie they were called afar and it stood for something yeah, yeah I wonder so if, they were trying to record them so i wanted to see if i can find like recordings when i looked but i didn't find anything you know what i mean yeah, yeah. you see real life the real life story that he kind of goes into differs a lot from the movie and we'll go into yeah. that here in a little bit like but that night that he was found there's there's some stories that says he was found with his clothes. Some stories say he was found with his clothes, but they were backwards. And so that that part kind of changes a little bit. The movie, I think, is the only the only thing that stated that he came back naked. I think it doesn't really ever indicate like you know where they go from there. I think it fast forwards to the future at that point, a couple of years down the road, and that Travis goes and meets up with Mike, and they talk. You know, they talk about their kids and he has a kid that's two years old and another one down the way. But that, and that's how the movie ends. And it never really gives us clarity about, you know, what the intentions were of the aliens. What are they doing here? What are they doing with us? Any of those things. And so. Well, he does I mean, ask him at the end, you know, um, because they had drifted apart and he's like trying to make amends with them. And he mm -hmm. drove him out to where they were clearing. And he told him, what are we doing out here? And he's like, you know, I just want to make amends with you. You know, it's been like two years since we talked, and right. he said, "Let's get out of here." I, I, I feel like they're gonna come back. He's like, "No, they're not gonna come back." Uh, you know, remember, that's when he made that joke about how they oh, didn't yeah. like him. They didn't like him too much. Yeah, it's weird, man. Because like, if if aliens were actually kind of taking us from from Earth. You don't think the government would, you know, do something or know something about it, pr protect us about it, from it? What do you think, Jaime? Do you think that the government, if there is alien abductions out there, do you think that the uh, our government knows about it? Uh, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, we're not. Do you think they allow it? it? Huh? 
Do you think they allow it, or is it something that's happening regardless if they just, care or not? I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they know that there's stories out there that are legit, but I also don't think they have any power over it. You know what I mean? I think it just happens. Right. But, yeah. um, but going going back to um, when you were saying that Mike walked into the city hall where they were having that meeting, mm-hmm. it's... Um, it's 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 crazy to think that you, a guy like Mike is living there for years upon years, have friends throughout the whole town, and they turned his back on him without any any evidence, and they were they were ready to convict this guy, convict that's true. everybody in that crew. No that's evidence. true. I mean, but that's life at this. You know, even today, uh, you know the the what the statute says, which is innocent until proven guilty. The court of public, you know, appearance mm-hmm. or the public of opinion is you're guilty until proven innocent. Even after they passed um, the first of many, many I think there were seven, I think there were seven. Yeah, lie detector test. You know, that's the one thing that gives this. You can't take away from this story. Now, the lie detector test doesn't determine whether you're lying. It tests for uh, the appearance of lies. Like, for instance. Um, the sweating, the nervousness, the the, the change in heart rate, all those these different things. The breathing, even your breathing. Correct. And so, so what, when I see it, when I've seen and read about what it does is, they'll ask you questions that they already know the correct answer to. Mm-hmm. So when you answer them, it gives them a baseline if you're telling the truth because you're answering it with the truth. Right. So then the other they thing- know when you're lying, it changes. But you know. No, absolutely correct. And the other thing, what most people don't know is that they're not the the person that's administering the test isn't going to give you an, uh, a question that you haven't been asked before. So prior to the test, they're going to sit you down. They're actually going to tell you what questions they're going to ask. That's you're not being asked anything out of left field. And so they they are aware of every question that's coming in, and that's the one thing because if you look at the evidence in this outside of the witness testimony and outside of um travis walton being gone for five days what evidence have is there that he was abducted have you guys found um the only thing that comes close was his when they hypnotized him and he said uh what he experienced after he woke up after he got knocked mm-hmm. down by that light but uh, that's that's his that's his word and stuff, so I can't, you can't really take that as evidence, but I mean, um, it's, it's, it's hard to take as evidence because it's, especially under hypnoti- uh, being hypnotized, um, it could be, maybe it could have been a dream or whatnot, but I don't know. That, in, 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 being um, hypnotized isn't like a complete science. We just kind of gave a, uh, a rundown of the Back. movie and it's totally... <laughs> This <laughs> took a whole bottle. <laughs> At the end of it, man, I was finishing it. It's the oh. it's the drunk turkey show. Oh hey, you made it to the end. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and that notification button so you don't miss any of our segments or our full on videos. Thanks for the support. Peace.